far as Niranjan Reddy, the man, his caliber, his capacities. Welcome to the latest film reviews that I am doing for you. I'll start off this review with a word of caution, a caveat. I sit here to analyze the wild dog and I would like to state very clearly at the very beginning that the film's producer Niranjan Reddy is somebody I know. Produced by Niranjan Reddy and Anvesh Reddy. This review of mine may be a slant in favor of the film because of the huge respect I have for S. Niranjan Reddy, the man, his caliber, his capacities. So I start off with a caveat that this film review of mine may be a tad biased in favor of the film because of my respect for the film's producer. Having said this, let me now go on to talk about The Wild Dog starring Nagarjuna, which is some kind of a takeoff or a repeat of India's Most Wanted, which was played in the Hindi version by Arjun Kapoor. At the very outset, I don't like to make two compares of the two films. As a film, as an end product, I would believe The Wild Dog is a far superior film to India's most wanted. Having also, I would like to say that Arjun Kapoor in the central character in India's most wanted was a far more impact making performance than Nagarjuna in the role that he plays as the wild dog. The interpretations may be a tad different. They may be even at one level very different, but I would believe that Nagarjuna does not leave an impact. And when you are the central character to a story of this kind, and you fail to leave that necessary impact, the film sometimes has a tendency to crumble like a pack of cards. Film deals with India's largest undercover operations of having to get hold of a dreaded terrorist. Scenes start from Hyderabad, the twin blasts, then the blasts near Dilshuk Nagar. There are montage shots at Charminar, Hyderabad. You move to some template shots of Mumbai, and then you move to Nepal, Kathmandu, where the you're trailing the terrorist. Story is how the police, the NIA in this case, has to reach out and get the guy. The storyline is reasonably linear, familiar. You know that in this kind of stories, you have stereotypes. You have the gun wielding police on the one hand. Since this deals with an identified group of terrorists, you profile them very typically. They are wearing their patan suits, they have the long beards, they are unkept hair, they belong to a certain community. All these prototypes are used, I guess, to make it more communicative and to ensure that you're not spending too much time in establishing the characters. Sometimes what happens is, and I think this is the uh, conundrum that a filmmaker often has, how much time do you spend with your raw stock on establishing characters and how much time do you take in developing them, making them human, putting flesh and blood into them and evolving their characters through a graph into the making of a film. Sometimes in these kind of films, commercial as they are, you don't use the niceties of the craft of cinema. On the other hand, you have the props. You know that this guy who's dressed in this version has this kind of a hairstyle, this kind of a beard. He's immediately, there's a mindset that he is a terrorist. So you don't have to work on that. Get four well-built guys, uh, uh, khaki yielding, uh, gun in there, and you know that they are the policemen. Then you have one guy or one or two guys on whom the camera will linger here and there to create doubts whether they are the guys who are the moles in the camp, either way there or here. And then you build your story to some finale where you come to know why one of them is a mole and why one is not. 
These are all very simply drawn lines and therefore there is not too much of artistic curves in the storytelling. Same is the tr truth with the wild dog. The story is very simple. You have Vijay Varma, a police officer, a person working with NI, who's lost his daughter to the bomb blast in Hyderabad. He is in sort of semi-retirement with his wife Dia Mirza in a special performance, in a special appearance. And uh, very soon he is uh, sorted out by uh, the DGP Hemant Atul Kulkarni, horrendous dubbing when it comes to him. What an actor! And we have seen him uh, even in uh, Niranjan's earlier film, we will talk about that later. And uh, I think somebody needed to look at his uh, dubbing in the film lack of professionalism there. Coming back to the story, Atul Kulkarni or uh, uh, DGP Hemnath goes to in search of his uh, prized possession Vijay Varma and Vijay Varma decides to get him to the act of getting hold of the India's most wanted. Like uh, Ravi Shastri would say in a commentary, something is about to happen. So does the home department they feel something is about to happen, that something is brewing, there is going to be another target after the Dilshuk Nagar story and therefore they are on the hunt for the terrorist. The terrorist knows that the police have sniffed near to him and therefore the escape is inevitable. Obviously in the Tom and Jerry battle, the terrorist has to move faster than the police to keep the story going. So at half time, just when you believe that the police have nearly got their hands on his collar, the escape happens. Enters into the story Sayami Kher as Arya Pandit, a raw officer working in Nepal. From here the story completely shifts to Nepal. Quick narrative, very linear, very soon, nothing added to the story. It is always on how are they going to get to the terrorist, a role of the terrorist played by Bilal Hussain. Again, I would believe over here an error in judgment perhaps. I would have preferred somebody who is more known to the audience or somebody maybe you know like Gabbar Singh. Ramesh Rippi had decided on Danny Denzompa, could not get Danny into the film, had to push Amjad Khan because Danny was doing Kote Sikke at that point in time, another western decoid story, so he did not want to repeat it as story goes. And when Amjad came, it is that focus on the larger than life performance that brought in the villain. Here there is no larger than life performance by the villain, there is no known person with who you identify as the villain, as a consequence of which the terrorist is not somebody who is established, there is not somebody on whom so much of effort needs to be based. You, it is only a question of serendipitous uh, manner in which the wild dog gets at him and catches him. Some final last moment climax scene, some minor twists and turns takes you to a finale. So far as the uh, making of the film is concerned, I think it is reasonably crisp. There are not too many side stories distracting you. I am very happy that the story does not have uh, the usual comedy sidetrack, people making jokes and laughing unnecessarily. There are no dream sequence songs, etc. etc. Thanks, uh, debutant filmmaker Ashishore Solomon, for saving the public of all that. Ashishore Solomon shows tremendous amount of promise, very focused. I would blame him at the casting stage and nowhere else. I think he is very focused, he puts his script in very crisply, tells the story well. Could have been told better, but that is a matter of perception. Could he have spent a little more time in fleshing the terrorist and the protagonist? Maybe yes, but that is his call. End of the day, the wild dog is a dog worth chasing. How much, how long? is one's perception, a film worth seeing once definitely. Do see it and do see it understanding this fact as I said, 
Niranjan Reddy, a man who's always been an extremely efficient professional, now brings his expertise into cinema. He's done three years, I know. He's done one in the sea, Gazi. He's done one in the air, Gaganam. And now, terra firma, land, the desert, lovely locales of Nepal, beautifully taken by cinematographer Shanil Dio. Have a nice look at uh, Kathmandu too. Have a look at how NIA deals with terrorists in this country, but understand at all points in time, this is pure commercial entertainment cinema. Thank you.